Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Vishal. I'm from VPN service, and I'll be working on hardware VTAP in Beryllium with Sam. From, you know, obviously, this is Prem. He's a PTL on VPN service, and he'll also be working on this with us. Anil, some of you would, most of you would already be knowing from other presentations. So uh, what we are going to talk about is bringing in hardware VTAP into ODL as a southbound plugin. Okay, so the use case of this comes from the L2 Gateway project in OpenStack, which is already there. What it brings is it allows you to bring tenant VM traffic into bare metals using overlay on top of rack switches. So it configures um, hardware tall devices to bring and set up tunnels between the OVS on your OpenStack side and bring the traffic over to them. So this is uh, what the hardware VTAP schema looks like. Okay, you can do this with on today you use the OVS DB schema to set up tunnels, you know, create your VXLAN or tunnel ports, you configure the add points. The semantics on the hardware VTAP side are a bit different. So what we are going to discuss right now is start off with the YAM model that we need to finalize like any other project. First we need to have a YAM model, we need to finalize the design on that, the things that we have lined up for this project during the beryllium release and maybe hash out a few discussion pain points that we have. Right, so, Sam? Yeah, okay. Maybe you have a short overview of what we're trying to accomplish here. Yeah. Like I said, so the... What problem does it solve? Like I said, L2 Gateway, what it brings is how do you bring your, how you bring L2 connectivity between your tenants when some of their nodes are the VMs sitting in on an open stack side and then they have some bare metal servers. You know, like for example, you, a tenant could be having some bare metals where they're running their database server for some of their web servers. Web servers are running in a VM. How do you provide L2 connectivity between them? That's what L2 Gateway brings into picture. So, uh, if you want it, this, there are nice tutorials and videos and all that because it's already a working implementation in open stack, I believe. Kilo release, so that can give you more on that, but we don't want to focus because we got plenty to discuss already. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so like, like Shaw said, you know, this is the current hardware VTEP schema. Um, and what we're gonna try to, at least what we're gonna start working through right now, the very first item we've gotta work through, um, let's see, that we kinda list out some of the work tasks you know, from the OSDB project side, at least. Um, you can see right off the bat, we've got the architecture, and we've kind of been discussing that. Um, we've kind of got that, uh, but the next item that you see there is the Yang model. So everything's gonna be driven, you know, it's an MD-style application, um, so everything's gonna be driven through that, so. Oh, so that'll be the piece that we're gonna work on now today, is we're gonna try to figure out this Yang model. Um, and then you can see the rest of the items kind of fall out of that. Once you have your Yang model, you can create your southbound, you can create the NetVert application, which uses that. Um, okay. um, so, so if you look on the left side, this is how the model currently looks with the OBSDB project with the Open vSwitch schema. And you can see on the left, uh, you know, it's under the network topology model. Um, the OBSDB node, that's kind of our root node. And from underneath that, we have, uh, you know, the Open vSwitch and the bridge. Those correspond to the, you know, again, the open vSwitch tables. Uh, you know, the open vSwitch is kind of a root table. Bridge, you know, that's, those are the bridges, switches. Um, termination points, that's the terminology from the network topology model. Uh, but, uh, um, but it corresponds to the port and interface table. And that's kind of how to read that. Uh, if you see the two lines in there, the top one's kind of what the network topology model uh, I guess nomenclature is, and then underneath it is kind of the corresponding uh, OVSDB table. Um, so that's what we have today is the Open vSwitch um, and the OVSDB, uh, the Open vSwitch schema. So what we'll try to do is go on the right. Um, you can see at the node, you have the root table, or I mean, whereas we've got this OVSDB colon one, you've got the hardware VTEP colon one. That's kind of the root now of where the whole uh, hardware VTEP schema would lie. Um, Node and global, that corresponds again to like the open vSwitch root table. Um, and those stars, those stars mean one to many or zero to many. Um, so there could be multiple nodes there. 
And that, that corresponds to the connection. So every single, every single OVSDB node, when it connects in over daylight, it gets one of those, uh, those node structures there. And, it, and like I'm saying, it represents the connection to that node. Um, the middle one, node, physical switch, max. Um, and that, that's kind of where, so on the physical switch, when we talked about the schema, uh, page up. You know, as you can see over here on the left, the root table is global comes across to the physical switch, the physical port. You've got those VLAN bindings to the logical switch. Um, and then up there, the UCAS max, local and remote. Those are kind of the important structures and how they map in. You can see the global table, the middle one, the physical switch. Um, and again, that course, that's very similar to a bridge in our open vSwitch world where we've got the bridges. Um, down beneath it, the termination points. Again, it's similar to ports and interfaces. It's the physical ports. Uh, and then it points over to the, uh, the logical switch. Um, That's where things get a bit complicated. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you're normally coming. So it, yeah, so that, well, that's what the whole model of the open vSwitch schema, it, the assumption is, is on those physical switches, you've got an OVSDB, it's an OVSDB node, so it's talking the OVSDB protocol. Yeah. So, so the, the physical switch is on the OVSDB. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. yeah, 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 that's key to the whole, yeah. the whole architecture, yeah. Uh, this is the one that's uh, yeah. yes yeah we are not trying to solve here the problem of overlay and how to provide abstractions for that we had okay we have physical switches running OVSTV which is hardware VTF schema how do we leverage that and we are the ones who bring them into the network, right? So that's what the focus is. We're not trying to solve the overlay problem here. We're not, I guess, that answers your question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, so the, basically, the, what you see, logical switch is basically a collection of those tunnel endpoints where you, you know, so logical switch is a, so you have physical switches where, which would be in OVSMs roughly, approximate to the bridges that you have or actual physical switches running OVSDB. Logical switches and, the, okay, before I get there, just so I think it would be better to share this. So, no, so these are the tables, so just how do they, it's the same diagram, but kind of a, so physical switch, what it has, it is basically a collection of ports. When we talk of like how to configuration of tunnels, like ports that you have, it should be the physical interface of, on the physical switch of yours. Each port has bindings like which are the VLANs it supports and all that, which will become relevant later. Uh, let's, okay, so now this is important. What, what is a logical switch? Logical switch is, if you look at over here, okay, we need to get a physical locator first. So physical locator is where you define your tunnel endpoints. Like, okay, physical locator means this is my, uh, we explain over IPv4 tunnel and this is its IP address, you define endpoints. So you have say 10 physical switches which have those endpoints using VXLAN configured. And then logical switches collection of those physical locators. So let's say you have 10 physical switches, each of them have four different endpoints. You can create a logical switch out of say, uh, endpoint one on switch one with endpoint two on switch four. You know, so some of them come together as a single logical switch that L2 domain 
you would call it. So logical switch is not some actual switch, it's a collection of tunnel endpoints spread across multiple physical switches. So that's the sign of, it took me a bit of, still I'm trying to wrap my head around to it. You know, coming from obviously it's a different kind of a paradigm, but that's what our understanding is. Uh, I, I Yeah. 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 So here, because our that logical domain comes to VXLAN, so it's a collection of those VXLAN endpoints who would participate in that particular broadcast domain. Sorry? Yes, yes. 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 So it could be spread across multiple switches, you know? And, and it's different than the lags, so. Yeah. Whereas lags, you're trying to combine a bunch of bytes into yes. one. In this case, we're just using this as a way of. Yes, yeah, creating an L2 domain. Yeah. Like, So this is an interesting thing. So logical switch, if you look at it, we specify as a collection of physical locators. What our physical locators are, like we saw. This destination IPs. Type is uh, currently supported type is only VXLAN over IP4, and that's what we'll be using. So it only supports VXLAN today. So then the IP, IP is the tunnel endpoint IP, your VTAP IP. So think of logical switches, collection of VTAPs. So. I changed the other patrons. Um, to your one? No, no, no. The whole, how the whole network would look. You know. You have well, the one of those. I'll get to you, my dear. Yeah. Yeah. I would have a good. Uh, Uh, yeah. Library on which side? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's what that's yeah, that's what our agenda is. Yeah, that's what I was trying to describe. So, yeah. so we have the piece on the left, right today. That's what we support today. Um, the library itself. Um, so, well, we don't we don't have that under. So, the Obvious to be project, right? We've got the library, which kind of does all the schema and the um, you know the protocol piece. Then on top of that, you have the plugin. Okay. So the library, it does support hardware veto. So it'll, the scheme is already there. It'll, um, it's not as well tested because this is probably the first real application we're using the hardware VTEP. So there might be some bugs there, I'm sure. But, but yeah, it'll at least, it'll receive hardware VTEP and it'll pass it up to some other application. So, but yeah, the plugin's not there. Yeah. You know, that southbound plugin. And that's, that's kind of what we were trying to focus in on yeah, here. If you had that um, Yeah, that, those, yeah those, I was kind of trying to go through the work items there, I guess. Um, you know, we're on step two, Yang model. Um, you know, the ODL Neutron and OpenStack pieces, those are kind of a separate task, which are going on in coordination with this. Um, but then, you know, the infra work and then that hardware VTEP southbound plugin. That's what you're really asking about, though, is that piece of that plugin. Um, so we figured, though, you'd start from that Yang model. You have to have a Yang model in order to create that southbound plugin. Netvert? Yeah, it's using that. Yeah. There's two plugins right now, just because. Right. <laughs> There's two, and, you know, we have to support. VTN still needed. They're not MDSAL compatible yet, so they're going through this old, the old 80 sal plugin side. It's not needed. You can share, you know, the, the way the OVS TV protocol works, you can have multiple schemas. So you could have open vSwitch schema and you can have the hardware VTIP schema. But that use case, um, 
I can see, you know, when we're, when we're playing with the testing, we might for open beast, you know, when we're just testing, and we're just using virtual switches, but yeah, in the and, real and world. You have to remember that these are like two separate schemas on OVS side. You, you can possibly have both of them or just one or the other. Maybe that could be another, do we force someone to have yeah. both in place or not? So these are some, some of the questions we still have to answer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it would be good not to tie them together. Yeah, but practically, yeah. I mean, in the model, at least the way it's going to be used, they're they're complete. You know, you have OVSDB sitting down on an OpenB so, switch. So you don't yeah. see any arrows going between them right now. Yeah. That's the sort of. Yeah. The left side, that would be on the hypervisors the same way that we do today. Yeah. On the right side, those are just going to be on physical switches. Yeah, so they'll be separate. Um, and that's kind of. Um, you know, when this, when whoever starts finally writing this code on the OVSDB side, the, the plug-in side, you know, th those are some of the work items, you know, that there's common, you know, th there's, there's common code that could probably be extracted out and yeah. could be used, so like, you know. Which, like, you might need to be made into a library or a feature or we'll end up duplicating or what, yeah. avoid duplication. Yeah, that's that's my thinking, and then, you know that's that's kind of part of this unconference too. However, it wants to be implemented. If we have different ideas, but yeah, my my thinking right now is, uh, you know, the way that we have the southbound, you'd almost make the exact same thing, but now it's driven through a hardware VTEP schema. You know, and what I'd like to see out of that though is, um, you know, the whole transaction model piece. Remember, that, you know, and how we. All the fields are done, they're actually just action, you know, it's a command pattern. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to, and you're, you know, right now it's tied into the southbound plugin, so but that should be able to be extracted out, yeah. you know, the, so the way that you create the transactions, you know, you have all the little helper methods which build the transactions, but then that whole engine, you know, the command pattern engine. So are you going to make a third model? Like, um, Yeah, I guess it would have to be a bundle, right? Yeah. Uh, in order to consume it, you know, hardware VTAP will be a feature. Obvious open B switch will be a feature. But at the end of you know, that, I guess that command pattern in the middle will have to be a bundle, I guess, so that it can be shared across the two. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that means it would require some refactoring effort on that side before. It is, so, yeah, and you so can. It, so it becomes that race against time, you know. Yeah, yeah. and you know, if if you want to start off, you yeah. can just <laughs> like you're saying, you just copy the whole code base right now, the yeah. southbound. And you can start working on it. Yeah, yeah, it's a work item. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, the. Uh, that's where you want to go. That yeah, that's where you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's. Uh, oops. Yeah, that's that infra work yeah, item. You know, there's a. Uh, oh, there's another piece too. Right now, the the library is actually stuck up underneath. Uh, the OVSDB southbound plugin. It's loaded as a private library. But that's really easy to pull out. You just create a feature for the library. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, so, um, so I don't know how we want to, do you want to walk through that model again then since that's, if, um, yeah. yeah. I think it would need to rework anyhow. Right. Now, so what do we have yes. to change? Yeah. Can you describe kind of the pieces that make sense, I guess? Uh, yeah, I, so uh, physical port, logical switch you kind of discussed. So physical switch max is the MAC addresses, the MAC table of the different physical switches. So you know, that for that, think of it like a MAC learning table. Similarly, there's a, a UCAST MAC table, which is where you learn the MACs of the VM side of it. So that would most likely be our operational data store over here. Yeah, yeah and I think one question that we, were discussing about uh, before I came here was, okay, if you have OVS also, and this also, and those MAC tables, how do you share MAC tables? Do you or do you not? That could be, like, maybe on not physical switches, if someone is using OVS as a physical, you know? You can, we have to support that use case, I believe, still, or don't really look into that. Um, because OVS does MAC learning. Do we store that in operational data store today? Well, I so don't think, not yeah. really. So the way that we do it now, though, it's not really Mac learning us. Right. We, we learn it, you know, yeah, we know yeah. this, when the instances are popping right, up. Right, right, right. So we flows. program in, oh, okay, we program flows, not the, yeah, so there's no Mac table for us to program yeah. in the DB, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So there's more like program flows, flows and we go away. Yeah, so here it's a table, so I think, yeah. so so think we, of, make it more of a 
operational and then we replay? Yeah. Or do you think this should be a... Well, so the Mac table, though, the, yeah. you know, I've got them, you know, so in, in, in the scheme of the Macs, you know, the UKS Macs, they're local and remote or separate yes. tables. Yes, that's okay. right. They don't map well into the topology model. They don't, they don't. So what I had done is, and you can see there in that, that physical switch, I've got Macs. Right. All I was going to do is, oh, I okay, okay. So there's a whole can, list of Macs. You have local and remote as part of yeah. it. Yeah, oh, yeah. there'd be oh, two cool. local and remote okay. inside of that physical okay. switch. So that was one problem you were struggling, so. Yeah. So I proposed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's a list, and it's actually. Right, right, right. I thought it was a sequential, but it's uh, it's key value. Key value, right. So. right. But does that work? So when a port, you know, as the packets come in off the port, right. you know, it's going to have a VLAN, right? And right. then you've got to jump into that logical switch table, right? Cause right, there's right. There's so, so VLAN is where that when you create a physical locator, you specify the VLAN bindings over there, right? Okay. And logical switch is collection of those physical locators. Okay, and that's So you support that, okay, yeah, this logical switch supports these VLANs. Okay. All right, so, so that should fit in the model. The way yeah. So we go from the port up to that logical switch. Yes. Um, Maybe this not just yeah physical locator we need some yeah so so right now the physical switch is pointing over to the logical switch right. how do we so it, okay so you've got the logical switch now but eventually you're gonna have to find those Macs right you're gonna say okay is that Mac local or remote right um, so how would th we that should reverse okay so see Mac learning happens within an altitude domain right so I would think of it not of a physical switch probably more of a logical switch like this very clear right that's what you're all saying should it be a property of logical switch or think that would be logical switch because that's a logical switch is an L2 domain. Okay. Max, you learn are relevant within an L2 domain. Outside you have to go through routing tables and all that, which we are not okay. doing. Like. So maybe tie it into the logical switch rather than okay. physical switch. Because the physical max over here don't mean for the physical switch max, it's more like uh, max learned on this bare metal side of it that I have learned. And the, so that's why the local and remote max, right? They don't use the term physical and logical. The local max and remote max, the max of the VM that you want to learn over here as part of that. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so I think, <laughs> yeah. So does the model fit though? I mean, is that a good starting point? Yeah, good starting point. I think let's get started as, as an learning you will have to maybe retweak it. It has OBS so DB, so right? Like OBS DB with VTAP schema, not the OBS schema. It is running the VTAP schema. Yeah. So what's the, within the hardware switch, it uses that schema to program also the hardware and like the CI switch. So that's fucking nice. Use it so as a hardware. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that's a prerequisite. So, yeah, so, so if you want your device to be supported, you have to have it. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so remember OVSDB, though, when we talk about OVSDB and Open V switch, they're two different things. Yeah. OVSDB is a database. There's a database and there's a protocol language. All but it happens to be in our world, though, when OVS world, you know, the virtual switch world, they're always tied together. Yeah. There's, a, there's an OVSDB database, then there's, yeah. you know, there's a V switch D. Schema. A switch. It's a DB schema, literally. No. Yeah. yeah, and the schema goes into OVSDB, and then that configures the switch. Yeah. So in the hardware VTAB, the only piece that you've got now on the physical switch is the OVSDB oh, database. That, because yeah. the switch is there, the physical switch is there. But yeah, it's just like another management. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And the schema is just the VTAB schema, so. So they came up with maybe they felt that OES schema has too much of things or things that don't address all the use case they wanted a simple version or whatever. But that's what they come up with then. Yeah, if it if it were then we wouldn't need to do all this. If they supported OES and they said okay we are fine with it we can do that we wouldn't have needed this whole project or sub project. Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe continuing some of the conference and.
this question was off. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, just starting point. The Yang model has already been hosted on JRIT, so would appreciate more pair of eyes on that. More eyes on that. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. It, uh, this is based on uh, he had uh, uh, discussions with Ed at, actually, so he gave some feedback. Yes, yes. So the Yang on Jared will not look like this, and we need to make some more improvements based on lessons learned from that how to write Yang model session yesterday. So it would be incorporated, but. And actually, I, I wanted to show a running snapshot of a schema, but thing is, uh, Alto Gateway folks, HP India, they could not come here, and they had their setup behind your VPN, so I could not access them. So. And I, oh, when we have meeting, our time. Yeah, so we, we've got the OVSDB meeting, you know, and the, a lot of a lot of this work is coming out of the OVSDB project, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, and we've got a separate VTEP, how do VTEP meeting also, right? Uh, Tuesday, I don't know what time zone here. It oh is. yeah, what time is that? Ten in the morning, uh, Eastern time. Yeah. On Tuesday. We have so we have the task added to the OSDB Buried Lamp Trello page. So yeah, I think there are quite a few still on the to do. Yeah, you can see um, to do work. You know, doing done. You can look at the hardware VTEP pieces. Um, this is our typical way when we work through our project. Um, anybody can work on a task. Anybody can pick up an item. <laughs> Actually, one item. It's not here. I would really appreciate if someone can is, you know, running VTAP on OVS and how that works. For now, all we have is on actual physical, which might oh, be a problem for CA when we come uh, to it, right? Who said they would do that? Somebody had, uh, somebody had running scripts. Oh, that was, who was that? Uh, I don't know. I found some blocks. I got the VMs. I haven't had time to work. I want yeah, somebody, uh, maybe we'll ask Dias. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what that's we were talking about right now. So right now, the existing setups we have that I mentioned, the HP folks who implemented L2 Gateway, so they have it with HP and Arista devices today. But it can't be done with OVS, and that's what you're saying. That's one activity not listed, but someone who yeah. can try that out. And it's, it's very similar, you know, you know when, you, when you bring up OVS, OVSDB, you can use OVS, you know, VS control, and you can, you can run, you know, you can yeah. start provisioning OVSDB. There's an OVS-VTEP. Uh, or it was VTEP control. OV, it's OVS VTEP, VTEP control. schema. Like, like when you bring up OVS, you normally specify the OVS schema. You may not realize if you compiled OVS, you would have specified it. You might remember it. Similarly, you can bring up the hardware VTEP schema also both at the same time. Yeah. So you just yeah. instead of OVS dot schema, you say HW VTEP dot schema like that. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, you load the schema, schema, and then like I'm saying, there's these control yeah. commands, and you can. There's actually a, a Ooh, VTEP actually, simulator. Uh, I think I. Even had the schema somewhere over here. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, yeah. So this is the schema, raw schema file, what it looks like. So it's trying to get a running version of the DB so that these, so it's a vtap.ovs schema file. So you would similarly have for normal open vsich dot schema, right? So. Because the, if you Google hardware VTAP, you will get a PDF which defines the schema. It's not fully updated yet. This is taken off the master code base of OVS, so it has a bit few more fields, mainly related to BFD and uh, one new table with some BFD parameters. I think we're past time. Yeah. But no one's coming up. Yeah. I think lunch time. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Thank you, everyone. Kilo release, so that can give you more on that, but we don't want to focus because we got plenty to discuss already. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so like, like Shaw said, you know, this is the current hardware VTEP schema. Um, and what we're going to try to, at least what we're going to start working through right now, the very first item we've got to work through, um, let's see, that we kind of list out some of the work tasks. You know, from the OSDB project side, at least. Um, you can see right off the bat, we've got the architecture, and we've kind of been discussing that 
um, we've kind of got that. And, but the next item that you see there is the Yang model. So everything's going to be driven, you know, it's an MD style application. Um, so everything's going to be driven through that. So, oh. Uh, oh, like I said, yeah. so the, uh, what, what problem is it solving? Like I said, LTO what it brings is how do you bring your, how you bring LTO connectivity between your tenants when some of their nodes are the VMs sitting in on an open stack side and then they have some bare metal servers. You know, like for example, you, a tenant could be having some bare metals where they're running their database server for some of your web servers. Web servers are running in a VM. How do you provide? L2 connectivity between them. That's what L2 gateway brings into picture. So, uh, if you want it, this, there are nice tutorials and videos and all that because it's a already a working implementation in OpenStack. I build OVS on your OpenStack side and bring the traffic over to them. So this is uh, what the hardware VTAP schema looks like. Okay, you can do this with, on um, today you use the OVS DB schema to set up tunnels, you know, create your VXLAN or tunnel ports. You configure the add points. The semantics on the hardware VTAP side are a bit different. So what we are going to discuss right now is start off with the Yang model that we need to finalize like any other project. First, we need to have a Yang model. We need to finalize the design on that. The things that we have lined up for this project during the Beryllium release. And maybe hash out a few discussion pain points that we have. Right. So, Sam? Yeah. OK. Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm Vishal, I'm from VPN service, and I'll be working on hardware VTAP in Beryllium with Sam. From, you know, obviously this is Prem, he's a PTL on VPN service, and he'll also be working on this with us. Anil, some of you would, most of you would already be knowing from other presentations. So uh, what we are going to talk about is bringing in hardware VTAP into ODL as a southbound plugin. Okay, so the use case of this comes from the L2 Gateway project in OpenStack, which is already there. What it brings is it allows you to bring tenant VM traffic into bare metals using overlay on top of rack switches. So it configures um, hardware tall devices to bring and sets up tunnels between the. So that'll be the piece that we're going to work on now today is we're going to try to figure out this Yang model. Um, and then you can see the rest of the items kind of fall out of that. Once you have your Yang model, you can create your southbound. You can create the NetVert application, which uses that. Um, kind of, um, so, so if you look on the left side, this is how the model currently looks with the OBSDB project with the Open vSwitch schema. And you can see on the left, uh, you know, it's under the network topology model, um, the OBSDB node. That's kind of our root node. And from underneath that, we have, uh, you know, the OpenV switch and the bridge. Those correspond to the, you know, again, the OpenV 